All right, guys, I'm going to be rebuilding the transmission out of my Raptor 660 engine here. I'm going to be taking apart the drive axle, the main axle, and the counter axle. Along with, at the end of the video, I will be showing how to put it back in the case, if that's all you're wanting to see. So, I'm going to get to it. Now, for the shafts, as you can see, as the counter axle just has a simple snap rig on it, and then the gear will come off of the shaft. For the drive axle... All of these are not pressed on, but you will have a couple of snap rings on there, so it's best to have some snap ring pliers with you of different sizes just in case. Along with, I have a different one here. I've also used it, and it works pretty well of not you know losing your grip and the snap ring snaps out of there. And for the drive back, so you're going to need a puller of some sort. That's why I'm going to be using this bearing puller to pull off the reverse pinion because it is pressed on there. And to get it back on, I'm going to be using this press. So just keep that in mind whenever you're going to tear this apart that you're going to need something to be able to pull off that reverse pin and, and press it back on. So starting off, I'm going to just go ahead and take off the counter shaft here, which just has the simple snap ring on it. So I'm just going to use some snap ring pliers on it and stick it in the holes and get the snap ring out. And there we go. First snap ring off. And now the counter gear just slides off of there and then you also just have a snap ring behind it, but that does not need to come off. And on the counter gear, there is also two washers. Just make sure you don't lose those. There's one on one side, and there's one on the other side here. Just make sure you don't lose those. So now I'm just going to spray off the shaft and try to get the oil galleries in here cleaned up real good. And also the gear as well. Make sure that's all clean. And then put this back on, and then put the snap ring on. Now putting everything back together, I'm just going to be using a little bit of assembly lube for pretty much the rest of this build. So I'm going to put some on this shaft and a little bit on the inside, the bearing surface on this gear here. Along with for the washers as well, put a little bit so it'll stay on the shaft and then start putting it back together. Now the washers do leave kind of a groove on here so I'm going to be putting these back on the same way they were. It's kind of easy for mine to tell which way was facing the snap ring and which way was facing the gear. So I'm going to be sticking that on there and then just put it on the shaft to make sure all that rotates pretty smoothly. Then the other washer and then the snap ring. Making sure it's all the way in the grooves here. There's no special orientation of which way this one is supposed to go. Just make sure it's in the groove all the way around. It doesn't go on anymore. And this shaft is ready to go. Now this is the drive axle. This is a lot easier to take apart than the main axle, so I'm going to do it next. And starting off, I'm going to go ahead and take off the washer. Then the first wheel gear. I'm also going to lay these out in order. And I'm also going to face these down so I know which orientation these are supposed to go. Now the fifth wheel gear. And then we have this circlip in there. So you use the same tools, just some snap ring pliers. And reach down in there and separate them. And then pull them straight out. Just like so. And now we have the tooth collar, which is right here. It just kind of looks like an oil gallery. I'm going to set that off to the side. And now you have the lock washer and a lock retainer in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop the washer off of there. Grab it and pull it up out of there. I'm going to lay that off to the side. Then the retainer for it, I'll probably just pull the gear off with it. So. And there's the retainer. I'm going to set that off to the side. And then you also have the second gear wheel. And then after that, you have another tooth collar on here. Again, looks like a little oil gallery. Then you have another tooth washer. I'm going to take that off of there. Then you have another circlip on there. Again, I'm going to have to get the snap ring pliers to get this off of here. And if your snap rings are starting to bend like this, it's probably best to go ahead and replace them. I've got new ones, so I'm not too worried about mine being so warped and warping whenever I'm taking it off. But I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side. Now we have the fourth gear wheel. I'm going to set that off to the side. Again, another circle clip. Lay that off to the side. Another tooth collar. Then you have the reverse wheel gear. And take that off. And then you also have... This collar on here, which is not a tooth one, it just spins on there. And that's the entire drive axle disassembled there. I am going to be replacing this O-ring. Uh, but now I'm going to blow this thing out, clean it off with some brake clean, make sure the oil galleries are clean. 
and then start putting assembly lube on the gears and start putting it all back together. All right, now the shaft, the gears, and all the collars are all washed out and clean. I made sure to blow air through all of these holes, make sure I had no liquid left in them and the air actually comes out of it. So everything is nice and clean, all the grooves are clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some assembly lube on it and start putting this thing back together. So first off, I'm gonna start with the collar. I'm gonna make sure I put a bunch of lube on this. So while this thing does have the oil gallery holes on it, along with the shaft does have the holes as well, this thing is free to move on it, and on the inside of the collar, it has oil passages on the inside of it, so whenever this rotates over top of the hole, oil will still be able to actually come on through here and squirt out of the holes. Now for the fourth wheel gear. So as I was saying, as this thing rotates, it's going to move the collar with it, so it does not matter where that collar was set on there, it's going to rotate and it's going to receive the oil that it needs. And then the tooth washer. So next up is the circlip. I have three of these, and this is the OEM part number, if you need it for reference. Now before I go ahead and install the snap ring, there is a difference between the snap rings whenever you're trying to put it on. And while it may be impossible to see on camera, but there is a little bit of a shaving on both uh, ends of the snap ring. One side's a sharp end, and one side's a dull end. You need to install the snap ring in the position where the sharp end is, away from the tooth washer that you just put on. And also, whenever you're installing it on the axle, you want to make sure the ends of the snap ring are sitting as close as they can to the middle of the splines on here. So with the sharp edge facing outwards, I'm going to go ahead and use my snap ring pliers. Can be a little difficult whenever that reverse gear is wanting to move on there. But I'm going to go ahead and close this off and try to get that set all the way down in there. And just like that, that's about as close as I can get it to where it's sitting on the inside of the splines on here. I could probably rotate it just a little bit to make it more perfect. But that's kind of what the manual is stating that it wants, is that the ends of the circlip are actually in the splines. Next up, we have the second wheel gear. And these tabs here are going to be sitting inside of this gear. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that on. Fits in there nice. And now for another circlip. Again, I'm going to have to put the sharp edge away from the tooth washer. And the tooth washer comes after it. So I have to point this one that direction for the sharp edge. Again, I'm dropping it off with the end of the circlips inside the splines. Now we get the tooth washer and we put it on. And the tooth collar is next. I've already got it lubed up and ready to go. Now for the tooth collars, they do have two holes in them. And there's also a hole that's inside the shaft. I don't have the shaft in the right orientation. But there is a hole in the shaft. You just want to make sure that whenever you're putting the tooth collar on there that you offset the holes from the hole that's in the shaft. So the oil can travel on the inside there to the journals. So once they hit the journals, they'll actually start squirting everywhere. So just remember that when you put in this uh, tooth collar and the one that actually sits down the line. Now we have the second wheel gear. Again, we're gonna have to orientate this on here so it mates with this one. Let's go ahead and put that on there. Make sure it slides pretty smooth and actually makes contact with that gear just like that. Now we get the tooth retainer, put it on there. Again, you can kind of tell the wear pattern on here of which direction this was already on there. So mine goes on this way. Now we get the lock washer and put it on there. Make sure it's in the same orientation so it'll mate with the retainer. Now we have the tooth collar. I'm going to go ahead and put that on. Again, remembering that there is a hole inside the shaft right here. And now for the last snap ring. I honestly do not know if the manual is trying to state that you have to do this for the rest of the washers because the picture in the manual just shows this gear here and then the tooth washer right after it but I'm still going to follow the orientation that the sharp edge faces the opposite side of the tooth washer so the sharp edge since I've already got the tooth washer on there is going to be facing outwards so it's going to be facing this way so again getting my snap ring pliers and ensuring I drop it down inside the grooves again making sure it's pressed all the way down in there and mine's not directly lined up with the groove, so I'm just going to go ahead and rotate it just a little bit. Like that. 
And now for the fifth wheel gear, and this orientation gear is in here, again, mating with this gear. Just like that, make sure that actually mates with it like it should. And now we have the first wheel gear. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I lube that up real good. Again, the orientation has the indentations here, so it mates with this gear on the end. Make sure that that will actually mate with it. Like that. And lastly, the washer. And that's the drive axle completed on there. All the gears that are supposed to freely turn do freely turn. The ones that are supposed to shift the gears are shifting the way that they're supposed to and mate with their related gears. So now it's time to move on to the main axle. Now before I go ahead and get started on the main axle here, whenever this is pressed on here, you're supposed to measure the distance between this to make sure that you have the reverse pinion gear on there where the manual tells you to. So you're supposed to measure from just the gear here since there's no tapered part to it. And the reverse pinion does have a little bit of a tapered part. So you're not measuring from that tapered part, you're measuring from the gear itself. And from what mine is reading, mine is actually sitting on the shaft too far. So I'm just going to have to remember that whenever I'm pressing this on here to make sure that it's in spec. Just keep that in mind that you're going to have to measure it after we put this back together. Now to get started, I went ahead and put the main axle in my vise here. I've got really thick microfiber towels on both sides to make sure that I don't score up the shaft. And I'm going to be using the bearing separator here. So I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to sit it up underneath here and make sure it's not grabbing the shaft but sitting directly underneath this gear so I can pull the reverse pinion out of here. So I actually ended up using the press because I could not get the vise to stop the shaft from turning and I didn't want to score it up because it kept twisting on it. So I ended up just using the bearing separator uh, to again hold the gear and use the press to press the shaft out. I'm assuming this has never been off on my full before because this thing was like stupid tight, but it is off of there now. And now the rest of the shaft is ready for disassembly. All right, moving along here, we got the fourth pinion gear. It just slides off of the shaft, just like that. Then you have the second and third pinion gear. Just slides off the shaft as well. And you have a circlip on there. This one actually has the holes in it. Again, just using snap ring pliers. Set that off to the side. Now we have a tooth washer on here. Then the fifth pinion gear just slides off there just like that and then this gear is made to the shaft so it's not going to come off here but that's the whole main axle disassembled so now i'm going to go ahead and get this thing cleaned up make sure all the journals are all free make sure all the splines are good and i'm going to go make sure i clean off all the gears as well all right the main axle is all cleaned up all the Journals are blown out, all the splines are nice and clean, so I'm going to go ahead and put some assembly lube on it and start putting this back together. Alright, starting off, the fifth pinion gear. I'm just going to go ahead and roll this on here. Just like so. Make sure it turns really good. Then the tooth washer. Then the circlip. Which again, this follows the same rule as the sharp end is supposed to go on the opposite side of wherever the tooth washer is. Now since this circlip is just a little different than the drive axle, you still want to attempt to get the ends inside the splines. As you can see, that's about the best that I can get, that they're both just barely inside the splines, so I'm just going to go with it. Now the second and third pinion gear with the circles facing towards the end of the shaft. So this one is going towards the gear that's already on. And it'll mate just like that. And now the fourth pinion gear, which orientates like this. And it just sits on there just like that. So whenever this shifts over, it'll mate with that gear. And lastly, we have the reverse pinion gear. And since this one is actually supposed to move with the shaft and you have to press it on, I'm going to clean off the lube that's on the tapered part of the shaft and go over to the press and get this pressed on. So for my press setup here, obviously this doesn't look like the safest method, but this is all I've got. I've got the clutch basket nut on the bottom of it to make sure that I don't mushroom out the threads on the bottom of it. And then I also have a socket on the top of it so it makes sure it clears the shaft whenever I start pressing it on. And I'm just going to go slow and just check it every now and then because remember, you're going to have to measure this from this gear to the bottom gear to make sure it's in spec with the manual. And after numerous attempts, I finally got it to be in spec. It's sitting on there a little loose, 
but uh, after I tighten it up, it sits at about 4.55 inches, which is right where the manual says it should be. So that's the end of the main axle. I'm going to go ahead and get the case cleaned up and start putting these gears in. All right, now it's time to go ahead and start putting the transmission back together inside the case. I've got all the seals replaced on the other side of this case, and all the bearings are lubed up and ready to go. So starting off, I'm going to go ahead and put in the counter axle here. There is an orientation that it needs to go because of this shaft design here inside the case as well. So just make sure you line that up when you put it in. And the gear should be able to move freely, but the shaft should not. Next is the drive shaft. I've already got the new O-ring on there and I've already oiled up this and the bearing. So I'm going to go ahead and just push this in. And it also will mate with the counter axle. And lastly is the main axle here. And whenever you're putting this in, I find it easier to take off this last gear and the washer first. So you can stick this down in here without that gear being in the way. And just like that, the main axle's in, so I'm going to go ahead and put this gear back in. And the washer on it as well. So now we need to go ahead and put in the shift drum and the forks. The shift drum is first, making sure that the little dimpled part is facing towards you, and you're putting this end in. So you go ahead and put that in there, make sure that spins freely in there. And then for the shaft, I'm going to go ahead and lube it up. Next, we need to go ahead and install the shift fork labeled L. When you're looking inside the transmission, you should see some grooves back in there. I'm just going to slide the fork in there and go ahead and get it in the grooves. And you may have to rotate the shift drum while you're doing this so it'll actually sit inside the grooves and grab the fork that's labeled R. And then install it in the second groove that's closer up here. Just like that. Again, I'm having to rotate the forks just a little bit and the shift drum just so I can make sure that I get these all lined up and that the forks are inside the grooves of the shift drum. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and put in the guide bar through both of them. I've already lubed this up and put a little bit of lube on the inside of the tube. I'm just going to go ahead and slide that in the forks here. Make sure that presses all the way in the bottom of the case there. Just like that. And lastly, we have the fork that's labeled C. This is going to be connecting to the main axle. And again, you're going to be finding the groove where the forks are going to ride in. Just make sure that the letter is facing towards you and go ahead and start sliding it on in there. And just like that, I got the fork in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get the guide bar for that one. Lube it up real good and put a little bit of oil on the inside of it and slide it into place. Now, you're also going to know that you have these in the right position whenever you go to spin the main axle and the drive axle will spin with it. If not, you're probably getting a bind somewhere or you don't have your gears in the right position. Just double check if it's not working that your forks are actually in the grooves of the gears and that your gears are all the way in the bearings all the way in the back and that the way that the gears are on the shaft, make sure that the orientation is also correct. But again, this should be able to spin whenever you move the main axle. Now I went ahead and threw in the reverse lever down below, which sits below the C fork. It just easily sits through the case and then you can put the bolt on the other side. But before you do anything else, the manual tells you to make sure that you put this thing in neutral before you put the other case half on it. The way that you can figure out that it's in neutral, or at least that I found out, is that this pin here will be straight up. So whenever this is straight up, you'll get it in a way that obviously whenever you're turning this, it's going to turn, but whenever you hold the axle, it's actually not going to spin. So whenever you get that in just the right position, you can hold the drive axle while spinning the main axle counterclockwise because that's the way that it's going to be turning and the drive axle is not going to be moving. So that's just the easier way to go about this. But yeah, that's the whole entire transmission put back in the case, all the gears taken apart, the forks back in, the shift drum, the reverse lever, and now this thing's ready to put the other side of the case back on. So as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. And if you'd like more videos like this, please subscribe.